Okay, uh, this is uh, U.S. and China turn four. Um, prior to the turn, the Americans have uh, 72 IPCs to spend. They're going to spend 15 of those 72 IPCs on some research dice. Uh, research dice are five IPCs each. You have to roll a six, so he has three chances to roll a six. And the way that we've decided to do the technology in this hybrid game is you get to name the technology you want to get. It's not a roll for tech and then roll for which one you get. So he gets to name shipyards. Uh, so that's what he's going to be going for. So let's roll these three dice. Okay, we have three. I'll put them in the cup, make it official. And if a six comes up, he wins shipyard. Oh, five, three, one. So no shipyards for the United States, and they lose 15 IPCs. Um, so they have 57 IPCs to spend, and um, uh, he'll tell me what the uh, what the spend is as soon as uh, as soon as he sends me the move. Okay, this is U.S. and China, turn four. Uh, the Americans spent 15 IPCs, as you just saw, trying to roll tech. Uh, they did not succeed, so the 15 IPCs is gone. Uh, with the remaining money, they're going to spend 16 on a new aircraft carrier, 21 on three um, transports, and 20 on two fighters. Uh, the Chinese have 13 IPCs. They're going to save one, and they're going to spend f uh, 12 on four infantry. Uh, the Americans have no attacks in the Atlantic, but they do have attack, an attack in the Pacific. Uh, they will be loading up all of their transports in Midway, and they will be going south to the Caroline Islands. Um, they will be loading up an infantry and an artillery, an infantry and an artillery, an infantry and a mechanized infantry, an infantry and a tank. They will also have four offshore shots with three cruisers and a battleship uh, on the Carolines. So should be a slam dunk there. Uh, the only Chinese move uh, involves all of the Chinese pieces on the board. Uh, two infantry in Sea Kang going into Shenzhen along with the uh, volunteer fighter uh, from Sui Yuan. So we'll get the dice ready and we'll start rolling. We have a fairly substantial naval battle, uh, or an amphibious assault uh, attacking uh, the Caroline Islands. Um, there are four transports. The um, Pacific um, transport ship, the uh, SS William S. Ladd, is transporting uh, an American uh, mechanized infantry and uh, infantry, the Marines. Uh, the Pacific ship. The SS Hobbs Victory is transporting uh, an infantry and an artillery of the U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, the uh, Atlantic ship, uh, SS Patrick Henry, uh, is transporting an infantry and an artillery from the U.S. Army. And the Pacific ship, SS Brown Victory, is transporting an infantry and a tank uh, from the U.S. Army. Uh, they will be supported by offshore shots from three cruisers, the USS Augusta from the uh, Atlantic Fleet, the USS New Orleans from the Pacific Fleet, and the USS Quincy from the Atlantic Fleet. Uh, in addition, there's a battleship, the USS Indiana from the Pacific Fleet. Uh, now again, the way we work offshore shots in our hybrid game here is they are first strike. So if he manages to wipe out all of the Japanese here, they don't get a defense. So here come the uh, offshore shots. And he got two of them, so there's only one infantry left. Uh, these guys don't get a defense. So, <laughs> All right, so uh, three ones, uh, one three, and four twos. More than enough hits. We got two, four hits, and there's only one guy. So this is a slam dunk. Let's see if the Japanese can put up any kind of defense. They did not. So the Americans take the territory with no uh, either air, um, army or marine casualties.
Okay, uh, this is the battle for Shenxi. The Chinese are coming in with two infantry and the American volunteer flying tiger fighter. That's two ones and a three. All misses. Japanese defend with uh, a um, artillery miss. That's a hit with the fighter. So they will take the territory. And the Chinese have no casualties whatsoever. Okay, non-combat in the Pacific. There's no American moves in the Atlantic, but this infantry from the Pacific is going to rail two spaces to the uh, uh, eastern United States. This fighter is going to move uh, three spaces to C-Zone 101, where um, the Americans are going to place a new carrier. Uh, and then there is a fairly substantial bit of naval movement uh, here. Uh, these three destroyers are going in three different directions. They're going to go to C-Zone 16, they're going to go to C-Zone 17, and they're going to go to C-Zone 18. So they're going to ring uh, the uh, Japanese, basically. Um, the uh, uh, two um, bombers uh, are on um, Midway are going to both act as um, transport ships and transport two infantry each uh, to Korea. Uh, they're going to be flying to Korea. Um, the rest of the fleet that was in C-Zone 25 is going to make its way south to C-Zone 33 and join the rest of the American fleet around the Caroline Islands. Uh, and also, uh, the two fighters that were on Midway are going to go on to those carriers and then go to the Caroline Islands. Um, so that's all the American non-combat move. Uh, the Chinese non-combat move uh, is the fighter plane from Shenxi is going to end up in Burma, which they are legally allowed to land in. He wanted to land in Shan State, but... Uh, He's not le legally allowed to do so. They can only land in Burma. Uh, so that's where he's going to end up. So give me a second to tidy up the board, and we'll come back with placements and money. Okay, placement of new units for the Americans. Their new aircraft carrier, of course, is going in C-Zone 101. Uh, and their three new transports are going in C-Zone 101. Uh, that's all they have. Uh, the Chinese are going to place three of their new units in Shenxi and one in Sikang. Let me just double check that and make sure that is correct. Yes, three in units in Shenxi and one in Sikang. Uh, okay. Um, uh, the only income adjustments are the Jap or the Chinese get Shenxi back. Uh, there is another change of ownership, however. Um, the Carolines are now American. Okay, uh, so we do have to change the uh, income tracker. It's kind of dark over here, I apologize. Um, but the Chinese go from 9 to 10. And so... Uh, the ten dollars that the Chinese get, um, they saved a dollar, so they're going to start with eleven. Uh, the Americans have a base income of fifty, and they have three bonuses. Uh, they would get ten IPCs if they built in both eastern and western United States at least two units. They did not build any units in the western United States, so they're only going to get five for that bonus. They get five for controlling Alaska and a bunch of islands, and they get five for controlling Mexico and the West Indies and all that kind of stuff. So they're going to get 15 IPCs bonus, so that's 65 total, but they have propaganda. So we're going to roll that, and they get three extra dollars. So they're going to have 68 IPCs to start the next turn, and China will have 11. Uh, okay, UK is up next. Let's see what they do with all those planes. Stay tuned.
we forgot to do the disposition of forces. So in the United States, in C-Zone 101, a fully loaded supercarrier with three fighters, uh, one um, uh, destroyer and three transports. In the eastern United States, we have five infantry, three any um, uh, mechanized infantry, and four anti-aircraft artillery. Uh, in the western United States, we have nothing. Uh, but in the Caroline Islands, we have four infantry, one mech, one tank, two artillery. And then in the sea zones surrounding the Caroline Islands, sea zone 33, there are four transports. There are, um, what else do we have there? Uh, one battleship, three cruisers, two submarines, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, one, um, or sorry, three fully loaded supercarriers, two with three fighters, one with two fighters, and a uh, tactical bomber. And that should be it, I think. That's, oh, sorry, no, um, because we have some Navy around Japan. Uh, in sea zones 16, 17, 18, there are three destroyers. That was a good move, by the way. Uh, oh, in Korea, there are four infantry and two currently air transports. Uh, and then for the Chinese, uh, they have five infantry. Sorry, one, two, five infantry in Shanxi, one infantry in Sikang, and their um, uh, American volunteer fighter in Burma. So, sorry, that was the disposition of forces, and now the UK is up next. Okay, it turns out uh, my opponent was a little unclear in his instructions, and I made an incorrect assumption. I thought everything was going to be built in C-Zone 101 or Eastern U.S. Uh, these two fighters will actually be built uh, in the Western United States. So, we will amend the... Um, disposition of forces to include two fighters in the western US which also means by the way uh, that uh, obviously there's two fewer fighters in the sea zone but also means that there's going to be an additional um, five IPCs for the bonus so instead of 68 IPCs there's going to be 73 IPCs for next turn. Uh, and again, just minor correction to the disposition of forces, two uh, fighters over in the western U.S. and one uh, fighter on this brand new carrier. Okay, all right.